Adam, people always ask me, what is Adam Sessler really like? Is he really a geek and a dork like he acts on TV, or is it phony? And I tell him, no way. Adam is no phony. He is the real deal. Well, thank you, Tina. I, I, I really do appreciate it. Yeah, that. I mean, it is so true, guys. This guy is truly a geek yeah. and a dork. <laughs> stop it. Stop yeah. it. Stop, stop it. I just want the audience to know that you two gals are about as authentic as they come. Thanks, awesome. Adam. That's people, awesome. Thank you. These ladies are exactly as you see them on the show. Caddy and annoyed. There yeah. is nothing bogus going on here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Adam. That's so sweet. I mean, we really respect our audience. We know people can smell what's fake, you know? Totally. And you guys, there's nothing <laughs> fake about Tina, except those two things. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I'm just saying. Okay, Why I'm, would you I'm, say that on TV? I'm getting a little well, uncomfortable, so okay, I'm just going to floss. Your hat looks ridiculous. You shouldn't be embarrassed. Well, you made out with your first cousin. I didn't tell anybody on TV. Can you make a quality RPG using nothing more than a half-assed understanding of Confucianism? We'll find out with Jade Empire. And we'll take a look at Midnight Club 3 and ask if the world needs yet another illegal street racer. And I'm Leslie Stahl. These stories <laughs> and Andy Rooney tonight on G4TV.com. Everybody and welcome to the show that changes boy toys more often than Michael Jackson. Oh, allegedly. <laughs> hey, bad. Hey, hey. You're bad. Hey, it's true. It's true. Anyway, Adam, it's so awesome to have another blonde, spiky hair person on the show. As you know, these brunettes are really bringing us down. Well, you know, the spiky, that's that's really kind of you. I, I think it's more like sprouty. I was being like, like, yeah, like a <laughs> You meant uh, bleach blonde, right? Natural. It goes this way. <laughs> exactly. Just like this. And you know, I know I'm a big fan of Morgan. Tina and Morgan. No, it's not that we get along. We're friends. Except mm -hmm. for all the video evidence to the contrary. Exactly. That's all. That's all. We're working through our problems. We're, we're seeing somebody. And you're working it through. Not on the same television. person, but we're seeing like therapist type talking to somebody. Right. So we're working it out. But how's your show going? Excellent. The show is going yeah. fine. Um, it's still on the air, and uh, so I just, I just check every night, and then uh -huh. I know okay, I can go into work tonight. Well, and it's not just on the air. It's on the air about seventy times a day. Adam says. That is <laughs> true. That's true. So if you ever miss me, there's no lack which of I do, <laughs> Right. I know where to find oh, myself. We miss you all the time, which is why we decided to have you back on a Great. second time. What games are people playing? What people talking well, about? Well, the big one, it's uh, Jade Empire. This yeah. is BioWare's RPG, and of course it's such a big deal because BioWare made Nice of the Old Republic, yeah. and we're behind Nice of the Old Republic 2, and the original KOTOR was, in, in, in our opinion, on X-Play, you know, the best game mm -hmm. of 2003. Yes. Um, I cannot stand turn-based RPGs, and it actually made me love them. Of course, Jade Empire is a significantly different game because it involves combat, and it's real-time combat, right. and it takes place in a mystical Chinese That's land. right. Yes. And a, a Not based setting. on ancient China, but a and mystical China. We talked a little bit about the combat. You had a little bit of problems with it, but oh, let's yeah. find out what people on the board are saying. Adam Barnes wrote in, he's from Florence, Alabama, and says the story is one of the coolest things about Jade Empire. Death's Hand is one of the most intriguing villains I've seen since Darth Vader. Now, I may agree it's got a great story, but I just think there's way too much reading in this RPG to get uh, to really get into. Adam, do you agree with me on that? Well, I mean, do you think it's more reading compared to KOTOR, or do you think there's too much reading in KOTOR I just as well? think it's too much reading in the RPG in general. I'm not an RPG fan mm -hmm. whatsoever, so I can't say that it's not a great game. Right. It's just not my style of game, but I still feel for an RPG, it's just got a lot of, t it's very text heavy at the beginning. But, hey, Adam, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. I actually played the game with the subtitles turned off, mm -hmm. which I kind of like the experience that, that that brought. But, but I, I didn't think that it was really that much of a problem. That's um, interesting that you did that because I actually turned it, played it with the sound off so I could click through and read <laughs> as fast as I wanted to because the voice acting is too right. slow for me. I, 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 I have found that with, with, with all of their games, that, that once, you know, you've already gotten through the sentence by reading it and they're still right. kind of lingering on the words. I think it's a problem that with, in a lot of games, that, that voice work is, tends to be a little bit too ponderous. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, are, there are a few games that, that are exceptions. Right. Now, Adam, how do you, did you play KOTOR as well from Bioware? I did. That's, uh, it was an awesome game. How, I do you, how do you compare this to KOTOR? Um, it's not quite as good. I don't think it's the classic that Knights of the Old Republic was, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot to like about it. I mean, the story was amazing. The characters were really interesting. And, uh, well, know, talk, talk about the combat, Adam, because we're used to seeing the turn based, and like we were talking about uh, this, yeah. Adam, Adam, and Adam. <laughs> uh, it's it's real time. Does that pull you out of it, or do you prefer just seeing the turn based like we did in Kotor? I, well, I, I thought the combat in Jade Empire it kind of works for the game, but it, it's not as as big of yeah. you know. It's it's, 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 it's nowhere near as polished. Yeah. Just, it doesn't have that. It's, it felt kind of clunky. I don't know, Adam, if you play God of War, but I found that to be the biggest problem. After coming off of this, this sublime combat system in God oh, of right. War, Perfect. to then go to what felt kind of just kind of jerky and unsure of itself. Almost a half ass fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, the I mean, other thing the is... The combat think, is definitely not one of the best things about the game. Yeah. But I, I think it, it does the job that it's really supposed to. So what do you feel like is the best thing about the game? 
Uh, definitely the story. I would, the story. I would agree with him. On but that. don't you just want to go and read the book? <laughs> I mean, it's a video game. Pick up the novel. Yeah. I'd like to keep my, mini, uh, my reading in my video game will compare to like a reading the back of your shampoo bottle. Like, we want to keep it just the basic instructions. Otherwise, I'll go get by a novel. It, it could be a good book, but... You know, when you when you play a game and you read a book, it's just a, it's a different experience. Understandable. Personally, right. I'm going to have to say that I felt more of a connection with the characters in Kotor than I did here because it's you know text heavy for the first two hours and then it lightens up here in Jade Empire. But the first two hours, they just throw so much at you it was, that it yes. was confusing at points. You know, and I'm an intelligent woman. And they use but big they words, which you've always had big a problem words, with. You know, with like multiple <laughs> syllables. Yes, exactly. No, seriously, there was just so much background and so much history that it was like I wanted to take notes to make sure I was catching it all. Because part of me just wanted to get to the gameplay that I wasn't reading as thoroughly as I was. And there's always that fear, like, oh my god, am I missing something important? Exactly. Because you're still trying yeah. to get used to it. I think also, I was, I was a little put off at first story-wise, just because the thing was, I, I kept on feeling it was about to veer into this land of stereotypes. So that was, it was me like, ah. Even though, I guess Star too. Wars. Right. I think yeah. it totally did. Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars is a world of stereotypes, but they're ones that are kind of original, of course. I, th right. I think Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, it had a couple of really good characters, you know, the HK robot, he was, he was awesome, but... Well, we just oh, haven't yeah. seen enough Star Wars games, though. That's the problem I know, there's that. such a shortage. There is. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they do one, like, based on the Lego I wish there were, like, three more bad movies that I can watch yeah. so they can make more games <laughs> based on Episode 97. But, Adam, so you recommend people to pick up this as an RPG or not pick this up? Well, um, if, if you really like Knights of the Old Republic, I think you'll probably enjoy the game. Um... But be yeah. disappointed in comparison. You're right. I, yeah. it, 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 it's not going to match up. I, I think the thing I find so interesting is that I, would, I don't like turn-based games. I thought, totally. oh, cool, real-time right. fighting, yay, 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 yay. And then I played it, and I really missed the turn-based fighting because when I was playing Knights of the Old Republic, I loved, like, setting up all my neat attacks and then sitting back and, and watching me just, you know, really? kick butt Which is all what I hate place. about that no. game, which is me going, oh. if I'm going to be, that's the one thing I actually really enjoyed about Jade Empire is for me to sit back and go, okay, I'm, I'm going to kick your ass, but first I'm going to say I'm going to right punch, left punch, right. left, and then I go, now go do it. There's something about that, it, it's sort of, it just, it's much more passionate when you go right into combat. Now you're kicking ass, and there's no setting. I, you know, I, I found it you agree with you. I, I, Sister. Oh, I brought the two of you together. <laughs> That's not fair. I'm driving away. All right, we got to take a quick break. Laura has to go throw up for breakfast. But upon our return, we're going to find out if Rockstar delivers with Midnight Club 3. If you stop calling me fat, I wouldn't have to do these things. Well, you've gained a little Flossing. bit. I'm trying Flossing. to let you, you know, I don't want you to be embarrassed on television. Hey, this is Father Adrian Gonzalez. I just want to say that I will be renouncing my religion of Christianity to worship the Greco-Roman gods. Thanks to the awesome video game of God of War, really did change my life. Why is every single time there's not a naked chick or lots of violence in a game, people always say, oh, it's Kitty, and don't play it. Is the game fun? Yes, then shut up and play it. I want somebody to make a Tony Danza game and call it Extravaganza. <laughs> I like the, I like the religious one. That's so it's awesome. like the new Kabbalah. Well, we're, 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 we're bringing spirituality to the world. Yeah, I, because, I, yeah there's positive things: religion, I hear sex, violence. Right. In a car to come over and the reason now. it's a kiddie game is we don't have sex, drugs, and rock and roll because that's all adults do. Yeah, exactly. So hey, you. welcome back. Oh, really? Adam Sessler of X Play Fame is joining us. Yes. We couldn't afford Morgan, but we're very excited that you're here. Well, I, I, I heard there's a fruit basket for me afterwards. Actually, Morgan, Morgan ate, ate it. All, it but, but, but we're really excited you're here, core. and you look great. I love your shirt. We all tried right. on a couple shirts before. Yeah, we did. And, this and, is and, the and, one and we, we settled with on. this. And, yeah. uh, well, we know what the kids say about my shirts and what it does to their members. And yes. We'll, but, we'll, but, but, but anyway. Okay. That's Rex Play. This but beyond Jade Empire, Empire, what's everybody talking about? All right. So now Rockstar Games put out another game. No, it's not Grand Theft Auto. And no, it's not State of Emergency. Thankfully, it's not State <laughs> right. of Emergency. Yes. It's uh, their venerable street racing series, Midnight Club. This Joy. is number three yes. with Dub Edition. Dub Edition. Uh, once Dub. again, this is, this is legal street racing. You may have heard of it. If you haven't, I want to hug you. Wow, what an uh, original idea. I know, isn't All that... right, you guys. Lay... Okay, we know that the genre is flooded, but this is a really solid game. It's based game. on a Vin Diesel movie from four years ago. It's fine, but you, even though the genre is still saturated, just like there's lots of RPGs and there's True. lots of first-person shooters, based, but mm -hmm. if a good one comes yes. out, you've got to give it props. Because I believe, I may be wrong, I believe when the first Midnight Club came out, which is right around the beginning of yeah. the PS2, this hadn't become such a fad. I thought it was a cool game. Yes. I, I just... I, I think I feel a sense of exhaustion. Okay. Now. Well, let's see what people on the board are saying. Yeah, let's see what people All on the right. boards. Am I the only one who is sick and tired of seeing one illegal street <laughs> racing game after another? And that is from Michael Boyd from Breckenridge, Colorado. And, Michael, you are not alone. Are you with me? Yeah, how's it going? Good. Now, what do you think of illegal street racing games as a whole? Well, as a whole, I think they suck, pretty much. They suck. But do you, I an mean, individual... Hold up a 
<laughs> Tina's about to chew you out, but hold on, I'm going to get you back here for a second. Have you played Midnight Come Free? Let's start with that. Yeah, I played, I played Midnight Come Free. I, I actually think it's, out of all the legal street racing games, it's probably one of the better ones. Thank you. Okay. That's I all agree. I'm asking okay. for. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> I just want someone to come up and say, yes, but this conversation is not about the genre in general. It's about Midnight Club 3, because that's what people are playing. Mm -hmm. It's got online capability. It's got the deepest customization mode that I've seen in a, in a legal street racing game. And I just think it's a really, if you like racing games, which you don't like, Laura. I don't like racing games. I you don't know. like driving real life, nor do I like doing virtually. Right, and I don't think out of, you're, you're a fan of it. with cars. Yeah. yeah, and out of the three, this is by far the best. I did not I, like I, I Midnight Club yeah, 1 and 2. Well, Michael, Michael, what do you like about played, the game? But I think the genre as a whole is really kind of, it's get, getting really tired. I mean, there's, there's, on Need for Speed Underground, they're making a new one, like uh -huh. Most Wanted or something like that. Let's but discuss, what is it that you like so much about it that makes it uh, above and beyond the others? Well, I like the customization, mm -hmm. like adding all the parts to it and, you know, tricking it out and all that. Totally. I like the um, Xbox Live support. Yep. Playing online, because, well, you play, if you play single player, you, get, you, you think you're pretty good, but then you go up against real people and you can kind of get a better... Right. Real better people are how, difficult. ...how good you actually are. Right. Oof, they're good to say, though, I'm... I'm I was a little disappointed in Rockstar. They're just so becoming cliche. The characters, like, the opening screen comes out, this Latin, like, thug type guy. And trust me, normally... Have you played thug. Grand Theft Auto? I know, and that's what I'm saying. I that's believe a little that. That's a department they, of cheap stereotypes. They've exhausted, actually, the, the color shine. Club, too, they had characters that were cliche as well, like... Yeah, I'm, I'm just like a, like a Vin Diesel character kind of guy and yeah, a bunch of other nonsense like that. And it is very stereotypical, and I think we, I get that the whole genre is saturated and stuff, Michael, and stuff, but you just got to give props to a, a good game that still comes out with solid gameplay. I'm a street racing fan. I like the online. No, it's not completely innovative. It didn't invent something brand right. new that we haven't but seen before. But interesting, you didn't like the other two. No, I didn't. They were really difficult, and they've got these arrows that are really tough to see sometimes, mm -hmm. and they're really, I think they really yeah, think tackled this problem. This, one, this was the best one I played. Probably the best street racing game I played. I didn't even think one or two were even playable. It was so frustrating. You got lost all the time. Right? Well, I think what's, what's, what's going to be sad is, I, I mean, I, I agree. This other genre is probably one of its, its, its best examples. But Need for Speed Underground just somehow has a lock on this. Yeah. And the people can't seem to look outside of it. I'm really curious to see if Rockstar, by virtue of them being, being Rockstar, Rockstar right. will be able to at least show people an alternative so it will force you to try to make a better game. And I think, I think Need for Speed Underground is just, is just a... Is, it's, it's a disc that's an ad. I mean, it's just right. it's nearly... Yeah, well, so you it's, prefer it's this game? Too. Oh, I would play this game. I would recommend this game to other people who like this type of game, and I would right. steer them clear of Neighbor Speed Underground, where the customization there right. is, is, is so superficial, it has no actual bearing on, on, what, on how the car really performs. But it's missing one thing. It's missing boobs and, and ass. Yes, but... I'm about to say, and I'd be a connoisseur of that from <laughs> yes. a distance. Right, I, right. I've that's what I've heard about you people up. in yeah. the office, the well, girls. that and the cars and a, a, a highly colorful character... <laughs> Two highly colorful characters are found on the whip set, and, and that's obviously on Sunday nights Is it here fun? at G4 10 at 10 p.m. So if you're so a car you enthusiast, go. you can actually watch a little bit of our You don't even have to like cars. I well, you guys won't watch it because you're not car enthusiasts. All right, we've got a break for a couple of minutes. Laura has to throw up her snack, but when we come back, it's all about you. We're scanning the forums and answering your really, really, really tough and personal questions about that one thing that you did that one night. I feel sick. They found out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to the show. We're having a fantastic time. Adam Sessler's joining us. It's been a blast. You look fantastic, by the way. Really? Adam. You look great. You, you know, the minute you someone says that to me, like, the yeah. hair's in the back of my neck stand up, I know something <laughs> bad's about to happen. Well, no, you have no. something on your nose, but it, don't even worry about it. We're not even noticing that. All right. I like the hairs on the back of your neck, Adam. Okay. Okay, stop. Mm -hmm. Hi. Don't, don't make Slide. me floss. All right, on the show, Adam, Laura, <laughs> yes. settle down. Tina. We really pride ourselves in bringing top game developers and company executives to mm. give you guys great previews and to get thoughts on what's coming up, right? It's important. But what we're missing are the people on the front lines. Yeah. Right? Those guys that know what people are renting, what they're buying, what they're selling, and what they're replaying. Yes. So it's a gaming trench foot. That's exactly what, what it is. So we decided to go to America's Heartland to meet our soldier. Aye, aye. <clears throat> His name is Shane See Hoffman. He's the manager at Maple Grove, Minnesota <laughs> Game Zone. So yeah. we're going to call him up right now, and we're going to ask him a couple of questions. We want to know what the game community is doing. We want to know. So From we're going to go ahead and can help you. Hey, Shane, how are you? This is hey, Tina Wood from G4. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. How are you guys doing? We're doing Good. fantastic. So we just want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, thanks for being on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Um, what are people renting right now? Uh, tons of people are asking for Revenge of the Sith. They just have to wait a few more days, mm -hmm. but I think it's going to be an awesome game. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of God of War. We were selling all that game like crazy. It just cannot keep it on the shelf. 
Understand that game so. makes people change their religion. I just want to know. They go monotheistic and polytheistic. I have to say, I was just at Star Wars Celebration 3, mm -hmm. and they had the Revenge of the Sith game there. This is the first time I've seen a move, like a, a Star Wars game based on one of the movies that looks like a legitimate game. It's been done by The Collective, which have had some hit or miss, but some pretty good stuff with Indiana Jones and uh, uh, the... Yeah, and Buffy, mm. but this has real saber combat. So it's not combat. just like fanboys being before. excited about no. it. It's going to be a legitimate game. I mean, the best way we could describe it is kind of like the Return of the King and the Two Towers games in Star Wars. Right. This was now, now, Shane, what can you not get rid of? What's just stacked on your shelves that yeah. you can't sell fast enough? Uh, Halo 2. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Well, it's been out for a while. Let's cut it, up, cut it some slack. And what about, are people returning anything? Um, yeah, a lot of uh, trade-ins right now on Time Splitters. It's a great game, but it's incredibly short. People have been complaining about the length of it. And, like, it's all about the multiplayer, but mm -hmm. if you don't have online, it's pretty much, you know, just play it for six, seven hours, you're done with it. So, so. really, no, so we're seeing no replayability in Time Splitters? Um, to a certain extent, you got to have the online. Like, it's a total online game. I mean, online is the future of gaming. If you don't have online, you're pretty much going to get left, you know, back in I the agree. Stone Age. Somebody tell Nintendo. It's yeah. the same thing that we said about Time Splitters, actually, on a review. If you're, if you're aiming for the single player, you have nothing. And yeah. If you don't like multiplayer, don't buy it. Now, we, we just previewed Star Wars Legos, which I was a huge fan of. Can you tell me anything exciting about Star Wars Legos? Is it flying off your shelves? Oh, yeah. I mean, I throw it in for, like, ten minutes, and a family comes in, they buy it instantly. It's just the most fun game I've played in a long time. The family buys it for their small children, let's yeah. point out that. Thank oh, you. you always have something oh, negative to add. Wow. Shane, we really appreciate it. And how's your day going? You having a good day? Yeah, you know, it's awesome. Uh, good weather. People are coming in, you know, checking out all the new stuff that came out this week. So it's a good day. All right, well, we're going to all call your store and hope that you get a raise. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Shane, thank so you, much. Shane. We appreciate we'll it. check in again it's, soon. You know what it is? It's interesting to kind of go out into the community and really find out what people are really spending. Because we get the numbers coming in. We get right. the executives we saying, stats. my game's great. But this is a guy who's saying, look, this is what people are actually really doing. So right. we, maybe we'll call around a couple of different stores. And, and if anyone wants Halo 2, now you know where... Uh, yeah. it's yeah, there plenty Minnesota. Stuff. Yeah. I, 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 I saw that guy. He's like, where can I find it? <laughs> exactly. I'm glad people are playing it and enjoying it and buying God of War. because yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And it's interesting game. about Time Splitters. I actually thought that it would have more replayability, that the online would be a little bit more effective, mm -hmm. but obviously not. The single not, player you know? is really, the AI is pretty bad. Yeah, I do agree with you. Okay. Yes, sort of. No. Do I agree with you? You do. No, you do. Don't make a habit of it. All right, everybody needs a little tweaking now and then. Whoa! Whoa. This is so dirty. Maybe you're tired of your tweaking. old duds, or you're just too old for that short, blonde, spiky hair covered oh. by a multicolored beret. Right well, we have a gamer makeover coming your way right after the break, so don't go anywhere. Don't change that dial. Do you want to go back to the fake issue? Do you people have know? dials anymore? Did I just no, age myself? Dial. David and Am fake. I 67? Next week, prepare for the ultimate trip as we evaluate Tim Schafer's new title, Psychonauts, and we sit down with LucasArts and Star Wars Episode 3. Good times. Good times. Make sure to tune in. Now, you guys. Right, Axe Body Wash came to us and they offered a free makeover to one of our viewers. Mm -hmm. And judging by the gamers that hang around the G4 offices, some gamers could use a makeover. <coughs> uh, <laughs> Tina. <coughs> you guys. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Sorry. a bunch of you guys wrote in. Tina wrote in a bunch too, but that's a different story. But a bunch of you wrote in. So right now, let's take a look at the very lucky recipient of an Axe Body Wash makeover. <laughs> Roll it. So I want to thank everyone out there who entered the Axe Body Wash Makeover Contest. We got thousands of entries, but there was one guy who seemed a little bit more stylistically stunted than the rest of you. His name's Jonah. Here he comes. Now, Jonah, we're going to make you look so good that your girlfriend's panties are going to take themselves off. Come on. Jonah! Now, we're at the Vaxburg Salon, LA's premier salon for celebrity makeovers. And this here is my stylist, Andy Scarborough. We're gonna make you look so hot. We've gone out, we pulled a bunch of clothes that I think are gonna look really good in you, and I think you're gonna like them. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah let's do it, all right. Jonah's gonna get naked. Let's do it. Jonah doesn't know this, but we've secretly flown in his girlfriend, Cindy, to be a part of this special surprise. What do you think of Jonah's look? Uh, Jonah's look is going downhill. Going downhill, you huh? Know, it seems like there's a scent emanating from his body. Let me tell you something. We've given him some Axe body wash to take care of the scent, so don't worry about what? that. And we've given him a whole bunch of other surprises that I really, really think you're going to like. Okay, have a seat. Let me go get your man. Jonah, we've got a surprise for you. One, two, three. Oh, Hi, honey. Ah, I got my belt. Oh, I got you. My bracelet. This. 
I look like Laura Boy. No! You like it? Oh my God. You look horrible. You don't like it? God. What's the problem? Horrible. I did this for you. Jonah, don't forget your ex body wash. Would dress great. somebody up and make them look I exactly like yourself. Well, given the fact that I actually used to look like that as well, right? Dude, it's a good look. Yeah, explains why the women ran. <laughs> yes, I'm sure people now are really writing Jonah, in to be part of the I think he, I competition. I think you look great. What more could you want? Yes. Anybody, we're out of time, so we want to thank everybody for kicking around the old controller with us today. Especially thanks to the sets for filling in the incredibly large ash appears. cushion left by Jeff Wait, that was Keely. A cushion? Mm. I thought it was an after dinner mint. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we love to have it's you around, Adam so Sessler. wrong on so many levels. And, Tina, I want to thank you for making me look good just by being here. Absolutely. Anytime, right. anytime. See you next week. Bye. Thank you, I see you out there. Still trying to be fly with that 10-year-old cassette player? Come on, dog. Join us in the 21st century. How does a $20,000 interior car makeover sound to you? Watch G4 for clues every night from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Then go to G4TV.com to enter the Whipset Sweepstakes. Four new clues drop every night. The more you watch, the more chances you have to win. Please believe it's the Whipset Sweepstakes, May 8th through May 21st. Tune in, geek out, game on. It's time for E305. We've got an entire week of the biggest, baddest video game event of the year. G4 is teaming up with IGN to bring you two hours a day of live coverage from the show floor. Get ready for huge games and even huger gamers. It doesn't get any more electrifying than this. E305 Live, presented by Jeep, starting May 16th at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific.